Hi, I'm Dr. Timothy Burns, an Associate Professor of Medicine at the U UPMC Hillman Cancer Center and University of Pittsburgh. And today I'd like to talk to you about uh, my recent presentation on the results from a Phase 1-2 study of ulmoracid in KRAS G12C mutant tumors. My presentation focused on the question of whether we could combine Olmoracib, which is a second generation highly potent KRAS G12C inhibitor, with the, the anti PD1 agent pembrolizumab. Previous studies in lung cancer have tried to combine targeted therapy with immunotherapy. Unfortunately, these have not been successful due to toxicity. In addition, in the KRAS G12C space, People have also tried to combine with some of the first generation inhibitors, and at least the data that's been presented, it's unlikely that these will be able to go forward due to toxicity, namely uh, liver function abnormalities. So in this, uh, as part of this phase one, two trial, we tested two cohorts of patients with pembrolizumab plus omoracid. We tested a first line cohort, as well as a cohort that had previously received chemo and immunotherapy, so 82% of those patients, as well as 40% had received previous KRAS G12C inhibitors. And what we found is, in the first line setting, we found a 77% response rate with this combination. In the second line setting, or in the previously treated setting, we found a response rate of 40%, and in each case, we found a disease control rate well over 80%. And again, in the second line setting, these are patients that have previously received chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and prior KRAS G12C. We saw responses regardless of pdl one expression. Two doses were tested, and both doses seemed to be effective. And so the second part is it does seem to be effective, and this is promising. We had a 12, we had a estimated 12-month PFS of 72.8% in the first-line setting, but was it safe? And so what we saw mostly for, in terms of treatment-related AEs was most of them resembled uh, the monotherapy ulmoracid, which is generally pretty well tolerated. There were three AEs that kind of stood out. Diarrhea, which all grade was 20%. We did have some grade three with 13%, but these were all transient, lasting less than nine days, and were easily resolved to grade one or baseline, uh, either with antidiarrheals or a dose, dose modification. Importantly, no one had to stop both their olmoracib and pembrolizumab um, for, and for the liver toxicity, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and only 3% of patients had to discontinue olmoracib and 11% pembrolizumab. But I think what's really important is what about the liver enzymes? So we saw overall ALT and AST about 20% and 16% all grades. We had 8% ALT, 6% AST, but importantly, these were transient. They lasted, the elevation to grade three lasted less than a week. Um, they were easily resolved either with a dose hold or corticosteroids. No one had to stop their therapy because of um, LFT abnormalities. And they were not high risk. So they were not 10 times upper limit of normal. No one was symptomatic. There was no total belly elevation. And so really the conclusion is, is this is a safe and tolerable, um, safe and tolerable regimen. So in summary, we showed that olmoracid and pembrolizumab, either in the first-line setting or patients that have been treated prior, even with the, both pembrolizumab and krs 12 c inhibitors, could respond at quite high levels. And these promising findings have led to a phase three trial testing this question in the first-line setting called SUNRAY-01. This will test both in the greater than 50% population, pembrolizumab plus olmoracid, and in the all-comer pd one population, whether the combination of Keynote 189 plus Omoracid will prove survival over Keynote uh, 189 alone. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.